In this lecture, we are going to talk about the JavaScript environment in QML. JavaScript is the first class citizen in your QML code. It has a lot of similarities with the JavaScript environments you see in things like browsers and Node.js, but it also has some things that are special to the QML environment. It does implement ECMAScript ES5, which is a standard of JavaScript that is implemented in most modern browsers like Firefox, Chrome, Safari. And this gives you access to familiar JavaScript objects like math and many others as we are about to see. We also have a QML global object, which contains the cute global object we have already seen. And we also have tons and tons of JavaScript objects and functions that we can use to make our job easier when adding some interactivity to our QML code. And the main job of JavaScript is really to add a layer of interactivity to QML, just like it does the same thing for HTML and CSS environments. Although the JavaScript environment in QML is very similar to what we see in environments like the browser, there are many differences you should be aware of. For example, the JavaScript engine in QML doesn't implement the DOM API. Its implementation of ES5 gives us access to objects like math, array, and many others as we're going to see. And one thing you should really be aware of is that JavaScript is not really documented in the Qt documentation. So if you try to search for things like date in the Qt documentation, you're going to have very limited information and you're going to have to go to JavaScript focused documentation online. And I'm going to show you one right now that is very useful. Okay, here we are. This is the developer mozilla.org JavaScript reference. It is very good. So if you are looking for the date documentation, for example, you can come here to built in objects and you get a list of objects that you can really look at. Inside we have Boolean, date, and many others. And you're going to have to come here to search for whatever it is you are looking for. If we click on date here, we're going to have different ways we can use this. They give us an example we can run. You can run this example by clicking the run button. It basically is very good to test your JavaScript. To show you what I mean by limited documentation, if we go to the documentation here and search for date, so this is a date QML type. They give you a few things and how you can use it in QML code. But for more information, you're going to have to check the date object in the JavaScript documentation that we just found here. The QML global object is the default object you fall in when you start to write your QML code. Remember when we are in our QML file, we can uh, type things like console, print, that's the global object we are in in your QML file. It contains things like the Qt global object that we have seen, we have tried it out, we have uh, used Qt quit method, and many others. It also contains things like print that we can use to output debug messages. It contains the console object. We have also been using that quite a lot when we typed console log to output some messages. It contains translation related methods, but we're not going to explore this in this course. But uh, it is very important when you want your application to run in multiple languages. The QML global object also contains an object we call XML HTTP requests, which we're going to use later in the course to fetch some HTTP data from the internet. The QML global object is your home environment when writing some QML code. We also have a list of JavaScript functions and objects that we can use. I think this is explained better if you see for yourself. So we are going to go to this link. This is basically a list of objects and functions that are available to you in the JavaScript engine of QML. There is the global object that contains things like NAN, Infinity, Undefined. There are functions and properties that you can use. There are constructor properties that you can use. You can use this, for example, to create a date object, a Boolean object, a number object. You can use this if you happen to need them in your QML code. There is the object object, which is the parent of all the objects in your JavaScript code. These are the functions you can use on that object. 
this is an exhaustive list of things you can do. So if you are working with arrays, these are the functions that are available to you. One thing we have used before is this for each method, and we used it to loop through an array and it was very convenient. So if you are interested in this, you can uh, actually come to the documentation of JavaScript, go back, go to built-in objects, look at array. And if you go down here, you're going to find array prototype for each. If you click on this, they're going to give you an example of how you can use this. So the documentation is really good. Down here, they show you things you can pass in. And I think they have some cool examples if you keep scrolling. So please check this out if you happen to be rusty on your JavaScript. I know I just threw at you a lot of information, but what you really need to know is that the QML JavaScript engine implements ECMAScript standard 5, which is the standard that is implemented in most browsers. It contains the QML object, which is your home environment in your QML file. And uh, it gives you a list of JavaScript objects and functions that you can use to really make your job easier. Okay, I don't like to throw information at you without giving you references. So we're going to go to the online documentation and show you where you can read more stuff about this. Here you can learn more about the JavaScript environment in QML. They say that it implements standard five of the ECMAScript standard. You see the QML global object, the list of functions that are available to you. You can read on this. If you need to read more about the QML global object, you can see this here. They tell you that it contains the cute global object we just looked at in a previous lecture. You see the print function, the console object, the XML HTTP request object, and you can look at this if you need more information about this. Okay, now that you know a little bit more about the JavaScript environment that is available to you in QML, where can you type JavaScript code in your QML file? Well, you can do that in property bindings, signal handlers, standalone JavaScript functions and imported JavaScript code. In property bindings, we have already actually used it. When you did something like height equals width multiplied by a given number, this is some JavaScript you are writing in your rectangle object. So you can use it like this. You can also use JavaScript in signal handlers. In your mouse area, in the onClick method, this is JavaScript you are writing here. There are two other use cases of JavaScript we haven't talked about yet, but this is the topic of this chapter, and we are going to look at how you can uh, use JavaScript in standalone functions and imported JavaScript code. For now, I hope this gives you a good introduction to what is available to you in terms of JavaScript features in your QML code. And in the next few lectures, we are going to explore more on this and actually open Qt Creator and start playing with us starting in the next lecture. I'll see you there.